wetlands are more productive on a per unit basis than an Iowa cornfield. One acre of wetland produces more in the form of plants and animals than does an acre of Iowa farmland. So people simply aren't accustomed to the idea that these wetlands are extremely valuable. Wetlands are natural filters for nutrients like nitrates. When the nitrates flow in, in, into a wetland from, uh, from the upland cropland that surrounds the wetland, the result is that they are lost to the atmosphere through a process called denitrification, so that the water that ultimately exits a wetland is cleaner than the water that entered. As individuals, we need some connection to the natural world, and wetlands uh, in Prairie out here are, are uh, you know, the two biggest communities that, uh, that this area has. Few would argue the value of agriculture to the state of Minnesota's economy. Many believe that wetlands stood in the way of future profits. But in today's age of superabundance, some are asking, what have we lost in exchange? Being here in western Minnesota in the Prairie Pothole region, we have a particularly strong uh, responsibility for migratory birds and in particular waterfowl, trying to provide breeding habitat uh, and, and migration habitat for waterfowl and other birds that depend on the prairie wetlands and the grasslands that uh, once covered this entire area. When the Prairie Pothole portion of North America is wet, Two-thirds of the entire continent's duck production may come out of this small part of the continent. And in fact, it's the prairie pothole region that drives the pulse in duck numbers that we occasionally see. When the pothole region is wet, we see continental populations spike. And when the pothole region is dry, we see the duck populations uh, enter and, and persist in a long, slow decline. Wetlands come in several forms, ranging in size from small marshes to small lakes. Generally, wetlands are classified into four groups. Temporary wetlands hold water from one week to one month during growing seasons and provide valuable food and nutrition to female waterfowl. Seasonal wetlands hold water up to 60 days during the growing season and feature ground cover for duck pairs to isolate themselves for breeding. Semi-permanent wetlands hold water in the spring and summer unless a drought persists. Ducklings are raised here amidst the brush and native grasses. Permanent wetlands are usually more than six feet deep and sometimes confused with small lakes. Mud Lake near Hartkoff's farm was classified as a semi-permanent and permanent wetland. Ducklings could hide in the bulrushes around the edge. But when Mud Lake was drained, the ducklings and other waterfowl simply disappeared. A lot of people think they leave, you know, so what? You know, they just move over to another marsh or whatever, which isn't the case at all because the other marshes are occupied fully by other plants and animals. And they don't just leave and go to another marsh and exist there. They disappear. That group of uh, wildlife simply disappears uh, forevermore. If you drain most of the small temporary wetlands that only hold water from seven to at most two to three weeks during the growing season, you will eliminate most of your breeding population of ducks. They simply will not settle in this part of the, of, of the state, uh, this part of the continent. It's just been in the last 20 years that we have realized that uh, maybe it's a good idea that we replant some of these prairies, that we restore some of these wetlands, and not just for the diversity of, of wildlife and critters, uh, but for the health of the landscape and for the health of the community. They offer a buffering uh, capacity to the land. The water, water from a heavy rainfall event or snow melt that would otherwise go and contribute to a flood in, in Montevideo or in Fargo or in in St. Paul. Flood damage reduction is one of the primary reasons that we restore wetlands today. And in fact, if you were to look at the Prairie Pothole region landscape at the time of European settlement, as little as 10 or 20 percent of the landscape may have actually contributed to river flow. Water ran off the land into the rivers. The other 80, 90 percent flowed into small depressions like these. 
Now, when you drain all of these small depressions into a main stem river, the, the result is predictable. You get much more frequent flooding and you get much more fl uh, severe floods. We'll have a 100-year flood event, uh, and it seems like uh, every five or 10 years we have a 100-year flood event. Well, part of that is because we've changed the equation. The land cannot hold the water because we've lost our wetlands. The land can't hold the water the way it once could. Flood prevention is just one natural control that wetlands provide. They also filter pollutants and keep them from our rivers, lakes, and water tables. Any pesticides that come in, herbicides that come into the marshlands are taken up by the plants, cattails and other plants, so that they don't get into the river systems like the Minnesota River or the Mississippi River. Today, thousands of tons of farm chemicals from Minnesota leach into the Mississippi River, and they become a problem for our neighbors to the south. We believe that that's a function of the runoff primarily of nitrogen fertilizers from the intensively farmed portions of the Mississippi River watershed. Ironically, the Minnesota River watershed here in southern Minnesota is one of the worst polluters in terms of total contribution of nitrogen to the problem associated with Gulf hypoxia, we believe. Then all of a sudden it looks like we cut water a cheap deal, so we sold it on the cheap. Now we've got to figure out how we can save what we can save or even put back what we can put back because it's a long-term asset we need for other purposes. I go to a lot of classrooms and, you know, and almost all the time the little kids will bring up, you know, and you got to love them, I mean, you know, they'll bring up the fact that, you know, the uh, rainforest. And, and sometimes the teachers will even have posters or taking up collections or selling something or uh, to protect the rainforest. And it just slays me is that uh, we uh, drained 95 to 99 percent of the prairie wetlands in Minnesota and, and across the Corn Belt. We destroyed and converted 99.9 .9 percent of the native tall grass prairies out here, but yet we have the gall uh, to uh, teach our children uh, that we should be uh, scolding third world countries on clearing their rainforest. I mean, it just kills me. Fifty years ago, ecology was a new term in the English language. Books from early conservationists such as Aldo Leopold and Rachel Carson inspired us to take a fresh look at the effects of modern farming on our ecosystem. Bob Hartkoff was one of the people who adopted this new perspective. Well, the farm is an ecosystem, and the marsh is an ecosystem, and the marsh is tremendously diverse and rich, and farms can be tremendously diverse and rich, except we have, through our operations on most farms today, reduced that richness to kind of a uh, monotone production. We've got corn and soybeans, Though he no longer lived on the family farm in Swift County, Hartkoff was determined to record the changes wrought by large-scale drainage. And he was determined to restore the rich variety of plant and animal life he knew in his youth. But as he would soon learn, his options were limited. So we're seeing something that approaches the look of the early grasslands throughout North America which is just a small, small remnant is left. You know, I think there's less than 5% of the early grasslands left. So what we're seeing are some of those original plants which dominated the prairie. 